slightly buzzed. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Bring in a bit of cheering and what stage, Mr. Joe Will! Hello! Hello! Hey, Brian, it's nice to be here. It's all right here, isn't it? It's good. I think you should have some two-way roads, but apart from that, it's good. Um, I made it here, it's all good. I like traveling, it's the best part of comedy. I've been in Edinburgh the weekend. Um, I love Scotland, but I'm also scared of Scottish people. I'll tell you why, I had an incident Two years ago, 2016, right? They have a big comedy festival in August. Uh, about a week into the festival, we're doing a show every day. Week into the festival, I'm flyering for my own show because my career's going well. <laughs> I gave a flyer to a woman in Edinburgh. She looks at the flyer. There's a picture of David Cameron on the flyer, right? He used to be Prime Minister, and I didn't know that fucker was going to resign a week before the festival. <laughs> and make all my flyers look shit. <laughs> anyway, she sees the picture of David Cameron. She's angry with me that because of me, she's had to see David Cameron's face, right? <laughs> and she shouted at me and she went, that David Cameron, I tell you what they should do to him. They should drag him out in the streets. They should tie him to a lamppost. They should douse him with petrol. Then they should <laughs> Stab him in the face. That's incredible. Don't know what the petrol was for. Just want to mislead him a bit before she stabbed him in the face. And that, Brighton, is the story of the day that I met Nicola Sturgeon. I shouldn't be doing jokes about David Cameron anymore. Anyway. We've got a whole new uh, political system. Oh, fuck, it's all kicked off. <laughs> Someone was angry. I think Nicola Sturgeon is in. I think that's what's happened. <laughs> anyway, we had an election last year. Uh, Theresa May didn't do as well as she'd hoped she would. Uh, so now we've got this weird situation where uh, there's no overall majority party. So the Conservative Party have had to do a deal with the Democratic Unionist Party. Those backwards woman-hating homophobes have had to do a deal with the DUP. Uh, um, that, was, that was an easy applause in Brighton, wasn't it? I, to be honest, I'm surprised Theresa May didn't do better. I thought she had a very good manifesto in the last election. I did. I thought it was very balanced, you know? Like, on the one hand, some children would lose their free school meals. Yes. But those same children would be free to go out hunting for fox meat, so no child will go hungry under Theresa May. And it, genuinely, sometimes I think Theresa May gets a hard time, right? Example, right? I saw someone on the news, uh, they've been asked about Theresa May, man on the street, he said this about Theresa May, he went, Theresa May's got nothing to say to me because she doesn't shop at Lidl. Well, that's a weird criteria for who's allowed an opinion. And he went on, he went, until Theresa May can describe to me what it's like shopping at Lidl, she's got nothing to say to me. And I thought, to be fair, I do shop at Lidl, right? But even I'm not sure if I could describe that experience. <laughs> What's it like shopping at Lidl? What even is Lidl? How would you describe it to someone not from here? It's like, uh... It's like being at a jumble sale on acid. It's like... <laughs> I have been there. I know I've been to Lidl, I promise you. It's a big building. You go in, something happens, you come out, you've got a panettone, <laughs> some tinned meat, and a six pack of cagoules. <laughs> Somehow more money than you went in with. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could describe that experience. Um, so. And, uh, and UKIP went at the last election as well. Again, I think sometimes UKIP get hard. People will say UKIP are racist, right? But UKIP are not racist. And I can prove to you that UKIP are not racist, right? You go to the UKIP website, front page of the UKIP website, it says, we are a non-racist party. Okay? So there you go, facts. Um, I mean, admittedly, that does make them sound more racist if they just hadn't mentioned it at all. 
non a non racist party. It just just sounds suspicious, you know? A bit like advertising a non paedophile babysitting service. <laughs> Why you felt the need to mention it at all. I mean, it makes you sound more like a paedophile. You realise that, don't you? Um, just get the paedophile jokes out of the way early. <laughs> I never know it's going to offend people. There will be some like weird shit someone will get really offended by. The most offended anyone's ever been with me was because I did a joke about Winston Churchill, right? That was too soon for them. <laughs> they, they came up to me after the gig and, and they got right in my face and they went, shouldn't do jokes about Churchill. If it wasn't for Churchill, you'd be speaking German right now. As though that's the worst thing that the Nazis had planned. <laughs> Nazi thing was about just a very aggressive German language campaign. <laughs> we were right to fight that. I'm not going to speak like that. So. seems to be a lot of kind of censorship now. I, I think a lot of the censorship comes from the left as well. I think left-wing people can often be quite kind of humorous and just... I mean, left-wing people are just difficult generally, aren't they? I know that's unpopular in Brighton, but I... <laughs> it is. But, right, that's the difference between the political right and the political left, right? So the right-wing people are, like, wrong but fun. <laughs> and left-wing people are correct but really fucking annoying <laughs> when they've been drinking. Actually, be honest with yourselves, Brian, right? Be honest with yourselves, right? You don't have to say anything out loud. Just be honest with yourselves, right? If you had to have a stag do, right? Who would you rather organise your stag do? Right? <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn or Donald Trump? You've got to admit. It's just, just be honest with yourselves. You don't have to say anything. Just be honest. Just be more of a fun night out. Yes, you might later have to recall that night during a sex crime trial, but at the time, hey! Donald's getting the Jaegers in. We're not, we're not going to be making jam with Donald Trump. I'm, I'm sorry. I know we're in Brighton and, you know, you've got your Green MP. I don't support the Green Party because I worry that if you give votes to the Green Party that they'll spend it on drugs. And I don't want to encourage that. But, um, I live with... I, in the Edinburgh Fringe, I live with um, uh, someone... Uh, her, her name was Jemima. I feel like you're not taking that seriously enough. She, her name was Jemima. She was an adult woman. She wasn't a puddle duck. She was a real person. I guess uh, her boyfriend uh, it was difficult. Uh, I forget his name. I imagine it was Peter Rabbit. And I, I can pinpoint the point at which I was like, no, we're not friends anymore. Um, it's two in the morning. He's hammered. And he's been talking to me for half an hour explaining why Thomas the Tank Engine is right-wing propaganda. And I was like, no, we're not friends anymore, I can't. The worst thing was that I actually agreed with him. I think that, uh, I think it is. Um, all right, you want me to explain it to you? I will. Uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, right? So the fat controller, he represents the bourgeoisie, the capitalist class uh, oppressing the workers. The troublesome trucks, they represent the unionised workers and they're always portrayed really negatively. So they're like, oh, we don't want to go to work today. We want a day off, health and safety, health and safety. <laughs> Tom's comes along and goes, don't worry, Pat Controller, I'll work twice as hard just for you. And the voiceover says, Thomas was a helpful little tank engine. <laughs> no, he's not. Thomas is a fucking scab. That's what Thomas is. <laughs> Fuck you, Thomas, the tank engine. I hope you get fucking privatised. <laughs> By Southern Rail. <laughs> I, would not, I would not wish that on the worst tank engine in the world. So. <laughs> uh, this is always lovely. I've been Joe Wells. Cheers. Oh.